you. Good! Good! That's, here come four! Get ready! Don't lose momentum! By the time 7th gen consoles arrived, Japanese role-playing games were already waning in popularity. There were several reasons for this, but mostly the big publishers like Square Enix and Level 5 had started to scale back. That's not to say there were no good JRPGs. It's just that emphasis was changing from story-driven experiences to more cutesy manga extravaganzas, and that wasn't really for me. Still, there were several diamonds in the rough. Before I continue, I should remind you that the PS3 emulator is another limiting factor. Some big games are missing from my list because of incompatibilities, and the most notable omissions are Final Fantasy XIII and Resonance of Fate. Battle Princess of Acadias has seriously good combat. While recording footage for my video, I got stuck into the addictive gameplay and had a real blast. It's a lot like Odin Sphere, although it doesn't feel as snappy. If you do like side-scrolling platformers, this one's a winner. Zil Ul is a series that goes back to the original PlayStation, and Trinity takes place five years before the events of the first game. The most important change was the gameplay, which dropped turn-based mechanics in favor of live-action combat. While the story is somewhat predictable, the combat should be enough to keep players invested. What exactly do you do, Alvin? You look like a soldier, but you sure don't act like one. <laughs> You're on the right track, kid. I'm a mercenary. It's better than being a soldier. I'm going to lump Tales of Zillia and its sequel together, even though they have different protagonists. The overall story is quite engaging though, and harkens back to the best we used to get on the PS2. While the combat takes some getting used to, it is truly excellent. So if you like old school JRPGs, you will probably love Tales of Zillia 1 and 2 as well. Nier was a spin-off title of the Drakengard series, and while I thought it had good production values, the combat was a little tricky. It wasn't always obvious how to kill enemy bosses, and the story was perhaps too esoteric for me, but I can understand why it became such a cult classic. What? Dragon's Crown was made by Atlas, the same developers who were responsible for the Persona games, and here they tried something different, yet no less remarkable. Just like Battle Princess and Odin Sphere, the game's strength was its combat. The story, while decent, wasn't as memorable. I'm decided. We're turning back. Wait! I must see my mother. It's for your own good. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll get there on my own. Chris, you'll be killed! No! Folklore's appeal was definitely its story and art design. It uses Irish mythology to weave a fantastic tale that involves a journalist's investigation of a sleepy village. Eventually, his journey leads to eerie discoveries that change not only his beliefs, but even gives him powerful abilities.
Valkyria Chronicles is an awesome turn-based game that's hampered by an overly long tutorial section and an episodic style, which turned off many players, but it really does pick up the pace later on in the story. Having said that, it was far more popular on Steam, so maybe it's meant for PC gamers. Dawn of the New World was a direct sequel to Tales of Symphonia. In fact, the two games were bundled together on the PS3 as part of the Chronicles collection. Most people will agree that Tales of Symphonia is the best in the series, so it comes highly recommended to fans of role-playing. Drakengard 3 plays off before the first game in the series and features similar combat. You can even perform aerial attacks with a dragon, mostly through on rail sequences or free roam sections where the main character can dismount the dragon at any time. The game's story exists as part of the Near Replicant and Near Automata universe. Persona 5 was arguably the most sought-after exclusive on the PS3 and one of the main reasons for the emulator to even exist. The game was released on Steam a while back, but it's still good to have options. My personal favorite of the series is still Persona 4, but to each his own, I suppose. Jeepers. Oi, boy, meet old Father Oak. How do you, a leafiness? Oh, Dribby. It's you. And to what do I owe the pleasure? Well, I got a visitor by her from another world, see? And what it is is, I was wondering if you might lend us a bit of a hand, like. Uh, Nino Kuni was originally released on the Nintendo DS, but the PS3 version was far more advanced. The animations were far better as well, having been created by Studio Ghibli. This was Level 5's biggest game since Rogue Galaxy, so the success was most welcome on the console. Anyway, that's it for this list. If you found this video useful, please remember to give a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.